Welcome back YouTube to another video on Atlanta to Dallas Aviation. Uh, today is yet another unboxing. I'm finally starting to get all these these pre-order models that I've had for months. Um, I, now that doesn't mean I'm going to have any to unbox next weekend, um, but I got six models um, this past Thursday and I'm recording this on Saturday and uh, being low tech as I am I have only 30 minutes uh, per video clip so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split unboxing number 15 into two parts uh, part number one is going to be my wide body uh, aircraft and then part number two is going to be the narrow body aircraft so stay tuned for the narrow body aircraft uh, but let's go ahead and get into this so my first plane I'm going to show you today is all right yeah is this American Airlines Boeing 777-200 from NG models uh, its registration is November 776 Alpha November and its item number right there is 72016 uh, this particular aircraft model is um, is a model of a plane that American does currently operate uh, it is 24.2 years old uh, and it has uh, Rolls-Royce engines uh, as power plants and let's go ahead and get into this turn this box on its side put the airplane up here Do our little 360 here. So as far as 777 models are concerned, uh, I would say that NG is my third favorite mold. Um, in the molds not uh, the molds actually pretty decent um, it's just that the aviation 400 and the JC wings um, are just as good a molds and uh, as far as aviation 400 is concerned they are my favorite um, triple seven mold now I don't think they have any 200s they only have 300s um, so if you're talking about just 200s I guess I'm limited to uh, uh, JC slash Gemini and uh, Phoenix um, but I would still even if we uh, keep it at just the 200 uh, I would say this is my second favorite one and partly because the the Gemini JC uh, wings um, has the APU in the back uh, molded um, and I, I I like how the APU in the back looks and is molded where well, we'll we will get to it in a minute uh, when we do our close-up but uh, NG does not, uh, didn't mold their APU onto their mold. So, oops. So it's just like, uh, it's just printed on there. And uh, I don't really prefer that. But otherwise, um, it's, it will do and I'm willing to pay for it. Um, when it comes down to it.
All right. So let's get a close up here. I do like that. I, I believe that they kind of got the uh, nose gear height correct. So that's nice. Um, the nose uh, looks pretty good and the slope down from just, I would say, just behind the L1 door, the slope down uh, looks pretty good. Then we have uh, American logo and the American titles. Um, the Rolls-Royce engines, as I mentioned earlier. It's classic and distinctive three, uh, three bogey main landing gear, times two. <laughs> nice angle on, on the wings as a, as a model that's supposed to be sitting on the ground. Very nice coloring and printing of the tail on the back. And again, since I made a big deal about it, the part that keeps this from being uh, my favorite 772 mold is right there in the back. So the APU is just printed on there where on the JC wings slash Gemini jets and I actually I'm not sure if the Phoenix one has it molded in because I feel like they use a much older mold which means they also uh, just print it on the back um, so just I, I feel like that should have been a molded area considering that NG is so new and the technology to make molds is so new. I just felt like they could have added that touch. Um, maybe the thought was um, the little parts that kind of stick out in the back on the real aircraft um, is just too big uh, when you mold it onto a model. Uh, so uh, maybe that's what they were thinking and that's why they didn't make that area more distinct and just decided that they would go with printing. But anyway. That's my first wide body of the day. Very nice. My second wide body today is also my first Air India Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner uh, in its new newest livery and I okay I do see the sticker now so uh, here it says 150 years of celebrating the Mahatma Mahatma uh, so, in other words, Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, its registration is Victor Tango dash Alpha November Victor. The, the NG model item number there is 590015. And this model is of an aircraft that is still active and its age is approximately 8.1 years. Um, it was delivered to Air India in June of 2015, and uh, it is powered by two GE engines. Uh, I don't really know the uh, number. Uh, I can't remember. I, I, I wanna say GE 90s are for uh, like 777, so I'm not sure what the designation of the GE um, engines are on the uh, 787 but they are GE engines so let's bring that model in here uh, 
All right. Get in a little closer for our 360. And let's go. So NG definitely, uh, if not leads the pack, is extremely high up in the pack as far as the Dreamliner of all kinds, the 8, 9, and 10, uh, as far as the Dreamliner mold is concerned. Very nice gear height. And it's it sits correctly. And of course this side of the aircraft is just really not any different than the other side other than it has the cargo doors on it for luggage and cargo. Now what I wasn't able to determine was um, the tail. The tail design is basically the most modern uh, tail design. However, um, it doesn't say Air India um, on the tail where all the other models that sort of have this um, livery uh, evidently have this tail design but Air India I'm, I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure if this is I'm not sure as I understand it India has like two sort of languages so I'm not sure which uh, version this is but there's usually a side that has it in uh, this script and then the and then the other side would have Air India written out in English um, so it does have it on the fuselage as you can see but uh, other ones have also up the tail so one side would say Air India in um, in English and the other side would be uh, more the native language um, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it alphabet um, or, or whatever um, and I don't mean to upset anybody by not really knowing that I'm just saying that that's I, I it's on other airplanes and other models like that but on this one it's void of that so I don't know if it's because this is the uh, 150 years of celebrating the Mahatma, or uh, or if it's like that um, for the 787. Anyway, let's get in closer here. All right, you got the nice nose. It looks like the... Uh, cockpit windows are nicely placed um, looks like we have the uh, Indian flag and then the Star Alliance logo in front of the L1 door then we have the titles and then just below the cheat line that's the sticker that's the 150 years of celebrating the Mahatma So moving back, we got our nice clean Euro white. Um, we have this nice uh, sun rays logo on on the uh, on the General Electric engine. Moving slowly back here. Uh, we've got our titles, titles there by the L4 door, or just before the L4 door, and Dreamliner underneath it, 
and it looks like it looks like in in gray just just behind the L3 door I believe that says Boeing 787-8 it looks like that's what it says but I'm not absolutely positive uh, so you got your uh, got your aerials and then your nice uh, sunbeam that's what I call anyway sunbeam uh, or maybe it's a sunflower I'm not sure but it looks like sunbeams to me on the tail there and then our uh, APU there in the back so looking really sharp there and like I said that's actually as long as I've been collecting that's my very first uh, Air India model so a nice way to start pretty nice And then we're going to finish our video, or at least this video, we're going to finish this one with a Lockheed L-1011-1 from All Nippon Airways. Uh, this one's registration is Juliet Alpha 8517 with an NG item number of 31. Zero three zero. Uh, so this is, I think this is their second A and A release. Um, if I remember correctly, the first one actually said All Nippon Airways uh, along here, and with no Japanese letters or symbols or whatever uh, these actually are pictographs. Uh, not sure exactly what they're called. This one only has only has the I'm going to call it pictographs because they're sort of letters, but they're also sort of words, as I understand it. So, um, uh, so that one, and then there's another one coming out where it's got both uh, All Nippon Airways written out in English and the Japanese uh, pictograph so um, that one is about to come out but anyway so we will get into this one uh, this this model represents uh, a Lockheed L-1011-1 uh, Tristar uh, it made it to the ripe old age of well it almost made it to 20 years now obviously uh, it was delivered to all Nippon Airways in December of 1975 uh, but the reason I'm saying it's only 20 years old is because it got broken up in 1995 so it only made it almost 20 years um, therefore even though it's older nothing of it really exists except maybe in parts somewhere um, so it only made it to about 20 years old and and as all tri-stars uh, they were powered by three rolls-royce um uh, i almost remembered the numbers oh 211s uh so rb 211s um, are what powered the TriStar, all TriStars. TriStars did not have an engine option for them, which also is a reason why they got delayed early on in the development of TriStars, was because Rolls-Royce was having some financial problems, and it massively delayed the TriStar um, program and resulting in many of the airlines that um, that ordered it had to order other wide bodies of the time maybe 
maybe they ordered 747s or maybe they ordered uh, DC-10s. Uh, but as soon as the TriStar was made available, um, those leases were allowed to expire uh, and they switched over um, to TriStars, such as the story for Delta. All right, so our 360. So this, of course, is the livery that they currently use. And if I, if I remember my research properly, uh, I don't think this TriStar, well, obviously not this one, but uh, the TriStar did not get to wear this livery very long. Um, and you may also know that uh, next generation models uh, have actually made uh, one of these ANA TriStars in what I believe they call the Mohican um, livery, which is which would be the livery that um, their TriStars wore the most and the longest. So there you go with the 360. Beautiful TriStar. I love this plane. I miss it so much, but you know, technology moves on and while And while the L-1011 was ahead of its time, it was pretty commonplace by the time we got to the next generation of wide bodies. Which was basically the next generation of wide bodies, I would say, were things like uh, the 767 and A330. And then we're on the next generation after that, uh, which are our triple sevens and um, uh, in, I mean, triple sevens are, we're kind of in between there, um, but triple sevens. And then we moved on to seven, eight sevens and uh, a three fifties and, then we, of course, got the Super Jumbo uh, A350, uh, I'm sorry, A380s, along with newer generations of, uh, of 747s. So here we have the L1 door. Uh, beautiful job on the nose shape with this mold. We have our A in it. A and A titles uh, in Japanese up there, right next to the Japanese flag. Then we have this nice blue, dark blue line. And then uh, along with the light blue line that starts at the L2 door. Some nice aerials, close up view of our RB211, 211s. Uh, on the port side here and then the dark blue and light blue line continue to angle up until it gets to the tail where the light blue line just kind of ends uh, at the number two engine and the dark blue engulfs oh I'm sorry it does not end at the engine it does go up um, the shallow part of the rudder there But most of it, of course, is the dark blue with the A and A uh, in English letters uh, at the top there. We got our nice uh, engine number two scoop up here that says TriStar on it, and our nicely shaped number two engine back there in the back.
And that does it for the wide bodies. So stay tuned for the narrow body part uh, of this unboxing. And if you're enjoying the content, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like it even more than just a like. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, but like I said, I just kind of do this because I like to share uh, my love of aviation and love of collecting uh, these gems of models. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you uh, for the narrow bodies.